Hi you guys, Lindsay here. Welcome back to my channel, Inside the Hem. So you probably remember a couple of months ago when I made the Sally Jean skirt by Style Arc. I used the um, camo fabric from Style Maker Fabrics. Well, while I was making that, well, before I started making it, when I was um, getting ready to cut out the fabric, I took some video to help show you guys how I predetermine if a pattern is going to fit me before I ever even touch fabric. To do it, I use Luna Graphics Co's Curve Runners, which make measuring pattern pieces, especially curved pattern pieces, super, super simple. So let's cut to the tutorial where I show you how I measure a pattern. All right, so I have my Sally skirt pieces all cut out. This is the waistband, and then I have the skirt back and the skirt front. Um, those are the only pieces I am going to uh, be checking here at this initial stage of um, checking the sizing. Um, so I have pulled out the instructions, and you can see that there is two inches of positive ease based on a size 10. So that's what I'm going to be looking for in the waist and the hip. Um, there are no actual finished garment measurements, none that I could find anyways. So when there aren't any, that's when I really like to check um, to make sure that this is my right size and that this is going to fit. Um, so first things first is I will grab the measurement of this waistband and you can see it's all one piece and it's beautifully curved, which I absolutely love, love, love. That's a really, really good start. Um, but to measure this guy, I can't even get it all on one, um, camera angle. Um, to measure this guy would be really, really difficult with your like regular um, measuring tape because you'd have to kind of follow along the curve and it's just not super accurate or super fast. I mean, obviously it can be done as you can see, I'm doing it here, but you know, if it flattens out right there and you don't get into that little curve, you could be missing little millimeters. And as we know, millimeters add up and become centimeters and <laughs> centimeters add up and become inches. And before you know it, you've got like a completely wrong measurement for your waistband. So I have marked the center front. That is where I need to stop measuring. Uh, the style arc patterns all have the seam allowances marked on them already, which is a huge plus. I absolutely love, love, love that. Um, so if your pattern piece does not have that, you will need to go in Find out what your seam allowances are and mark them all before doing this because you are going to use the curve runner along the seam allowance, not along the raw edge, but the seam allowance. And basically the curve runner is just this little um, acrylic wheel, kind of like a pizza cutter. And all along the wheel are measurements starting at zero. And then this one goes up to one foot. There is another one that's smaller that does an eight inch measurement. So you can see that there if you'd rather do a smaller one. Um, I'm gonna use a larger one just because this is such a large, you know, piece. And basically you put the zero at the corner of the seam allowances. And then you just run the curve runner right along the seam line. And when you get to 12, you say to yourself, 12. <laughs> then you keep going, keep going, keep going. And you get to 12 again and you say to yourself, 24. And then you keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. And I got to another 12, so it's about 36 inches. Or it is 36 inches um, from uh, the uh, seam line here to our center front. So my waist measurement is 34. This piece is 36. 34 plus the two inches of positive ease equals 36. This is exactly the perfect size for me, which never happens. I bet if I like ate lunch or something, <laughs> it would be a little bit different, but that's okay. I do want it to sit right at my waist. 
um, I guess that's technically called a, it's not really a high waisted garment, but it will sit up there. It's not going to sit on my low hip. It's not going to sit um, below my belly button. It's going to sit right there on my waist. So this piece is actually perfect, which I'm so happy about. Um, if, it, if your piece is not, then you will need to do slash and spread or go up a size to um, whatever the next size up is. So keep that in mind. I am very happy that I don't have to do anything to this. That's great news. Okay, now we're gonna check my hip measurement. This is where things usually get a little crazy because if a size 14's waist fits me perfect, usually the hip is gonna be a little small. All right, you guys, so now I am working on the skirt pieces. This is the back piece, and I have also laid down the back yoke so that I can get a full measurement of the side seam. Um, I measured the width of the waistband as well, and it came to side to seam to side seam one and three quarter inches. So I need to measure where my hip circumference falls because it's not marked on this pattern and it's also not measured. At least I couldn't find the measurements anywhere. So I'm going to show you how to find it on your own. Um, so basically we take our curve runner again and we're going to start it at one and three quarter inches at the side seam at the um, where the waistband seam is as well. So that little cross intersection of seam lines and you put it down at one and three quarter inches, like so. And then we're gonna measure all the way down, but we're gonna stop at nine, which is this pink line here. And we're stopping at nine because that's like the industry standard for distance between waist and hip. If you've done a sloper before or something like that, then you know if you have a short hip measurement or a long one. Um, mine actually is pretty average at nine. It can be anywhere from seven to 10, I think. Um, so if you don't know where it is, you wanna, um, you can quickly find it by measuring the, marking the widest part of your hip, like with a pin into some clothes and then folding yourself over, finding your waist measurement and measuring down. And whatever that length is, is where you need to mark your hip measurement because you're trying to find the widest part of you on this flat piece of paper. Okay, once you do that, um, I extended the straight grain up. That's what this pink line, this vertical pink line is, just so that I could have a st good straight line on the pattern to do a perfectly horizontal line right at that nine inch mark. And once you've measured that across, then you have your hip line marked. And to measure it, you put um, the end of the ruler at the seam line over here, and then you measure across to the seam line on this end. And I'm getting, let's see, I'm getting 11 and a quarter inches. So that means that the back piece is 22 and a half. So you can do like the big four does and make a little bullseye and size 14 is 22 and a half. Cool. Okay. Now we're going to do the same thing for the front piece. The front piece has a little pocket on the side seam. like this. You've got your little pocket piece and I've lined up to match this little curve with this little curve. And then you fold the pocket over on the fold line and that's what your front side seam is going to look like. And when I do all the same things that I just did, I get my nine inch hip line right here and I measured it across and it is also 22 and a half inches. So when you add those two things together, 22 and a half plus 22 and a half, you end up with 45. Yes, <laughs> 45 inches um, is the full circumference of 
the this pattern at the hip line so my measurement is also 45 so I am exactly the same width as this and I need to add in the two inches of ease so I'm going to go in and add um, the extra to the side seam here There is our beautiful new front skirt piece with the hip measurement being exactly what I need to get two inches of positive ease along the hip line. So now we're just going to do the exact same thing for the back in terms of adding the strips of paper to the side and filling in three eighths of an inch um, on the side seam. We are not touching the center fronts or center backs at all. We're only adding to the side seams. Okay, and I did the exact same thing to the back piece. I measured from our hip line measurement out half an inch and then filled it in with my hip curve. So we are maintaining the waist measurements at the top. So both of these just blend into that so that we don't have to add anything to our pockets. We don't have to add anything to that yoke piece. Um, we're just blending so then it all will fit um, anything from, you know, the low waist up will already fit any pattern piece that's up there, which also includes like the zip, um, fly and all of that. Um, pocket piece is going to be the same. Everything, all the other pieces are going to be the same because all we've really done is add a little bit of width to the side seam and didn't touch the center front or center back or the waist. Um, all of those pattern pieces are going to remain the same. So that's how I go by double checking the pattern against my own measurements um, and making sure that I'm going to get a fit that I like and not rely on the measurement chart of the pattern designer. This one though was pretty spot on. I gotta say, I think I would have been, I think I would have known to add some width to the hip simply because I know there's such a difference between my waist and hip. Um, but I am really impressed that the waist was exactly what I needed it to be. So that's really reassuring for this pattern. I'm already seeing some things that I'm loving, like this curved center back, kind of like a built-in sway back. That is awesome. I think this is going to be really, really great. I can't wait to cut it out and get sewing. So there you have it. I was able to make the Sally Jean skirt without ever even making a muslin and trust that it was going to have a pretty close, if not really good fit. Here's how the skirt ended up looking if you didn't see the video the first time around. And if you want to try out the Curve Runner for yourself to try measuring your pattern pieces before you cut out the fabric, I have a link where you can buy them in the description box. Also, Claire, the lovely owner of Luna Graphics Co. on Etsy, has generously offered all of my viewers a 20% off coupon code for the Curve Runner and anything else in her shop. <laughs> um, she has some really great tools in there. I love the sleeve placket template. I've done a tutorial on that before. I'll put that in the description box as well. And her 5 8 inch wide curve rulers are also really, really awesome. So I will give you guys links to where you can watch my videos about that and see if those are things that you'll be interested in. But honestly, all of her products are really, really great, super helpful, super unique, things you can't really find anywhere else. Um, so that coupon code is Lindsay20 right here on your screen. So be sure to use that at checkout for 20% off your entire purchase. So uh, until next time, that's going to do it for me today. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all very soon. Bye.